And it was a way of drawing them into the story, and drawing, a way of carrying forward the themes that were in the ride. So that's who Dreamfinder and Figment were. Uh, and uh, yeah, you just gotta come over. The, uh, the original ride lasted until 1998. Uh, Kodak uh, decided they wanted a couple changes. We don't really know why they took out the original ride. There's a couple of rumors, but I don't think we're ever really going to find out why. But they took out the original ride. They took out Dreamfinder and Figment. And um, they opened a new version of the ride that didn't have Dreamfinder or Figment, and uh, nobody liked it. Tremendous <laughs> negative upheaval in the, uh, in the cosmos. Oh, wait, no, it's and so they closed the ride again, they put Figment back in. Not exactly the same version of Figment, he's a bit of a brat now, but uh, Figment has remained tremendously popular. Uh, he's done merchandise all over the place, and now that we're coming up on the 30th anniversary of the opening, of Epcot Center, Dreamfinder Figment are popping up again on the merchandise because we're always good for a buck. Uh, for a laugh. <laughs> <laughs> so, Ron, um, in terms of Figment and the ride itself, what was the thing that you remember the most? Is there an incident with a specific guest that really stands out in your mind? It was it was the quintessential moment of Dreamfinder and Figment living up to the ride. Well, the first moment, the first thing that comes to mind when you say is there one quintessential moment. It was uh, when I when I first got the job, I first applied for the job. I got to go to Glendale, California, and see that first scene in the flying machine set up. They just programmed, sitting in the middle of a giant warehouse on a couple of sawhorses. It wasn't in its atmosphere at all. It just been programmed. So Tony Baxter goes, watch this, pushes a button. I got to see this whole four-minute scene play out. That makes a tremendous impression on you. When you're a performer, you think of yourself, this could be the role of my lifetime. This could be something that I would do for a number of years, feeling that responsibility. Um, the, the moments that, that I loved, and, and a lot of people have been asking me questions like this recently, and the thing about it is, you know, when you say, say to a normal, normal guest, what's the most magic moment in your Disney day? Um, and they talk about meeting a particular character. Well. I was very lucky. My, I was out there making those magic moments, so I would have, you know, 30, 40, 50 magic moments in a 30-minute set. I loved going out there first thing in the morning um, when Epcot had just opened and people hadn't quite gotten back to the Imagination Pavilion. A couple of kids would be there ahead of everyone else. They'd be drawing, there'd be always be the kid drawing on the magic palette, drawing Dream Finder. He just got off the ride, now he's drawing he find a thing. He's old been over working on that, and he'd hear, boy, he's very good, isn't he? He'd turn around and figure that I would be standing there watching him draw. It was a wonderful feeling to be able to do that to people. People would come driving by on the monorail, and they just arrived at Epcot. They haven't even gotten off the monorail yet. They just came over from the Magic Kingdom. And they'd go around looking at the different pavilion buildings, and they'd come by Imagination, and they'd see me and Figment standing in the garden area waving. It's just the look on their faces as they go by the monorail. Uh, the quintessential story, the one that I keep going back to, is it's coming off of a, a 30 minute set one day, very crowded. And I'm shooting through the crowd trying to get back to my dressing room when there was this adorable little boy, maybe about five years old, standing by himself in the middle of this mob. And I'm hesitant to stop because, you know, you can get swamped and you can get trapped out there. You'll never get your break. But there are no other kids around, so I figure I'm all right. Kneel down. You know, he's introducing to my arm. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we talk for a while like this. And he doesn't. I, I talked. He just. And finally, I, I stood up and I said, well, I'm going to go now. Goodbye. And he goes, goodbye, Jesus. Goodbye, Jesus. 